Brooke is an assistant professor and coordinator of instruction for the library at the Brooklyn campus of Long Island University in Brooklyn, New York. He holds an MLS from Queens College, City University of New York, and an MA in Media Arts from Long Island University. When he's not assessing students, he chairs the National Book Awards Selection Committee for the Theater Library Association, and is founder and editor of the New York Theater Review, an annual anthology celebrating alternative theater and performance in New York City. Brooke? Well, thank you, and um, I'm very happy to be here. And the reason particularly I'm happy to be here is um, uh, my library at the Brooklyn campus of Long Island University is right now about a summer's behind uh, where I think um, uh, Rebecca is right now. We just, um, we just completed our first year of outcomes assessment of two core curriculum classes. And when I, when I say just, um, we've, we had to put our report in uh, last Tuesday, 31st of May. So we're still sort of decompressing from that. So uh, one of the reasons why I'm, I'm, this is just so perfectly timed for me anyway, um, is that over the summer we're going to be reassessing our, or assessing our assessment and seeing how we need to move forward and adjust for the fall. So particularly when I get to the end and I'm, asking questions. These are really questions really that I need to know and I'd be very, very, very uh, grateful for any, um, um, any comments, any feedback, any guidance that any of you may have had who've already gone through this. Um, uh, if we don't have time now, I sense, I don't know, but I sense that Andrew will not be shy about pulling the plug on you. <laughs> um, and as we move forward, you know, these, these presentations keep getting shorter. So, uh, I, I want to uh, move through, I have a lot of information, I, I need to move through a little bit fast, but I'll be here all day. So um, I'd be very, very uh, uh, grateful to talk to anyone um, about that. So uh, let's move forward here. Let's see what we have. This is basically just what I'm going to go over, why are our libraries assessing, which may not be uh, necessarily just, you know, why you may think we're assessing. Uh, we've had some interesting sort of, um, incentive, I guess. Um, what our library assessed, uh, assessing what our students learned, and um, then assessing the assessment. Um, just briefly on a little background on the Brooklyn campus of Long Island University. Um, as you see, this is the most recent data we have from the 2010-2011 uh, academic year compiled by the university. Uh, our campus is predominantly uh, black, uh, that includes uh, African American, but also uh, a significant uh, component of Caribbean and also African, particularly West African. Uh, and it's also almost three quarters uh, uh, female also. Uh, I don't really know why that is, but the, it may be because we have a, a fairly um, um, large nursing school, perhaps, which I think is still predominantly female. Um, but anyway, that's th the case of that. These two classes are what basically what our assessment was based upon. Uh, our English 16, which is basically freshman comp, it's, it's like an English 101. For some reason, the, uh, our university uses other uh, designation. Uh, but it, it's, a, it's predominantly incoming freshmen. Uh, and it's, it's one of the required core courses that no matter what the uh, uh, student's major is, they're going to take this class to graduate. Um, that's then followed usually in the following semester, although some students will put it off. We sometimes get, you know, uh, seniors in their last semester. If, wait, I don't, oh, that core seminar class. Um, but usually it's, it's second uh, semester freshmen, first semester sophomores, which is an inter, uh, interdisciplinary writing intensive course um, that is, uh, it's, it's a, a it's sort of the next step in uh, following English 16. There are two, uh, two courses that now both have a research paper component. Um, that wasn't always the case. I'll back up just for a moment. Um, that wasn't always the case until, um, let's see, I begin, beginning in the fall of 2009, the library worked with the English department to, um, help, in, to help instigate a, um, or implement a, um, uh, a research paper component into English 16 because there, there was none previously. And we found uh, that students getting to course seminar were often 
overwhelmed with the prospect of writing an eight to ten page paper of critical thinking, involved reading Aristotle, involved reading Kafka, involved a, a number of our students who are non-native English speakers, and they, it, was, it was an overwhelming experience for them. So we sort of retrofit a research component into the preceding um, class. Prior to last fall, the library had, to, had assessed a total of, uh, we were up to six um, course seminar sessions. And um, this had begun really as just uh, an interest among myself and my colleagues in the library to find out what were our course seminar students learning in the library session. Um, and it was something that we had just um, developed on our own. And then, just about a year ago this time, the Middle States Commission on Higher Education, <laughs> my university's accrediting body. They're not going to be here. To, I'm not going to be in Brooklyn until the spring of 2013. But the university began to assemble a number of approaches to prepare for this. And suddenly, they were hiring a lot of like assessment people, uh, and then assessment people to help the assessment people. And the, the library became suddenly a, a focal point. And they said, we want you to assess. We want you to assess. And they, they began to look at our uh, assessment program, which had not really been, uh, no one had really paid attention to before then. And suddenly, we were rather scrutinized. We now have a lot of administrators analyzing our process. And then the faculty said, wait, wait a minute. There, there are too many administrators here. We want faculty involved. So we have faculty fellows who now are also scrutinizing our assessment uh, practices. So they basically said, OK, for the, for the uh, coming academic year, the academic 2010-2011 year, we need to really dramatically um, up your assessment. So they said, OK, so go do it. So we got together, my colleagues and I, and uh, under a, you know, a certain finite time constraint, and um, we said, OK, what are we going to do? And if you've ever sat in a room with your colleagues and had to basically put together a, uh, in a, a very distilled agreement in a short period of time, you can probably imagine what this was like. <clears throat> but we did come out with, um, uh, actually, a pre and post administered fixed test. Now, this was locally developed. That's another, uh, that's another expression for homegrown from student learning issues anecdotally derived by library faculty from teaching experience in consultation with teaching faculty. What that means basically is that we did not teach to the test because there was no test, but we developed a test from what we were teaching. And we, we said, OK, what are the key elements um, that we think the students uh, need to know most? What are we trying to teach to? We had learning outcomes for both the English 16 and the course seminar of which we all anchor our teaching in. And we um, then began to develop a very brief pre and post test, uh, because the, particularly the English 16 classes uh, range from 50 minutes three times a week to 75 minutes twice a week. Um, there isn't a whole lot of time. So here, and I'll, I'll just move through this quickly. Oh my god, there's no clock here either. OK. Um, You'll let me know, though. You'll give me a chat. OK. Because um, basically, I'll just go through this quickly. I won't go through every, every answer here. But this is what we developed, and this is why. This is for, remember, incoming freshmen. If this, I'm not sure how basic this is going to look to you, but this is very, we're dealing with very, very basic skills here. Um, the first question, where would you go to find a book? Uh, and it, it, it helps in what we teach, basic uh, library web page navigation. Um, what do you, LUCAT is our OPAC, so that, that's where you would want to go among the options. We use Gale Virtual Reference Library a lot in English 16. It's a sort of alternative. It's, it's very user friendly. It's very simple and easy to use. As an alternative to Wikipedia, our university is not, Wikipedia is not a popular source there. Um, and the, the, uh, it's an all of the above answer, but it, in the questions, hopefully demonstrates some of what um, uh, this database can do for students. Um, library barcode, what we use, we have. I don't, I'm not sure how um, 
decrepit this system is, but we have uh, students are still, still need to get a little sticker put on the back of their ID cards. It's not integrated into our, um, into our registration system yet. Um, but also, it's, uh, it's their library card. But actually, what they find usually much more interesting is that it allows them the off-campus uh, database access. It allows them into the proxy server there. Also interlibrary loan, but again, it's an all of the above, but we're looking to, to try to show them this is what you can do if you take five minutes and get that little uh, piece of tape stuck on the back of your card. Then, because we also don't want to get too caught up in just the electronic uh, aspect of it, there's also uh, just about physical navigation. This still is a, it's a 3-4, fairly modest library, but it still has some square footage. Um, and so there's a question there about um, where you should go to get additional assistance, which I think is probably the, the most, had some of the most revealing answers uh, were, were there. In a longer presentation, I would have shared those with you because they're quite, they're quite uh, informative. Then because of the, uh, and again, I don't know how, how common a situation this is for, for those of you who teach uh, in information literacy in uh, research paper components, but the research topic, the research topic question and how students struggle with that, how difficult that is for them. Uh, in the English 16 component, we ask them to, uh, in the pretest, describe their, um, their research topic as they knew it then. And then at the end, we ask them to do it again. And then at some point, we, we would like to look and, and compare that data and see how we're doing. We're, we're working to try to help them focus in constantly. And it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a multi-pronged uh, challenge, certainly. Um, then moving up to Course Seminar, Course Seminar, and that, then again, is, is the one, it's the next step up. And the library was really instrumental in sort of integrating into both and, and providing the kind of connective tissue. Because the Course Seminar is not an English department class. It's sort of a campus-wide that draws from um, uh, professors throughout all the disciplines. Uh, it's also, the, it's the research class that begins to introduce students into uh, the difference between popular and peer review. We don't really even get into that in, in English 16. We're just trying to get them to maybe get a newspaper article, maybe get something out of Time or Newsweek, uh, and how to uh, navigate that in an electronic um, environment. So again, these questions were sort of culled from my colleagues and I as far as, as, far as what students thought were scholarly sources, the New York Times. Um, they thought were scholarly sources. NPR.org, a scholarly source. Um, so we have then again, um, they don't know, I'll tell you about that in a moment. Um, then again, this looks again at our web page navigation, but slightly more sophisticated than just where to find a book. Now it's going more into um, how to get in to locate um, databases and then databases specific to whatever um, research project they may be working on. Two constant, constantly baffling um, uh, terms, abstract and citation. Our students have struggled with those um, and mix them up and just uh, and have so many problems with that. These questions, of course, then ask, um, what is an abstract? What is a citation? How well are we communicating that between uh, the pre and the post? And uh, then, this, this question is going to resurface only because I, I actually have a question about this. Course Seminar, again, is, is a class that often works within a neighborhood, uh, particularly as um, some of them have moved into an e-portfolio pilot program and it's become very multimedia. There's a lot of work within the neighborhood and Brooklyn, is uh, the campus is just off downtown, right near it, sort of adjoins the Fort Greene area of Brooklyn. Um, so I'll get back to that question in a moment. It, what it's looking to do is how we try to focus in their keyword search. And they, they work a lot on neighborhoods. So one would think this would be a fairly straight ahead question. What is the most focused? What is the most focused set of answers as far as looking for Brooklyn neighborhoods? Uh, that didn't particularly have a happy ending. Um, in addition, students were asked to briefly describe their research topic, which we didn't get beyond in English 16, in the pre-assessment and their thesis statement in the post. They're, we're trying to get them to move just from a topic to an actual thesis statement uh, within the course of, uh, of this, these two library sessions. So now, finding blackbirds of Long Island University, how did they do in just recently completed data? Um, 
You will see here, and I had to, I had to actually blow this up some, so it's a little bit blurry, but you'll see uh, in uh, English 16, we assessed 517 students. Uh, the first question, this is where would you go uh, to find if uh, LIU has a book? It's LUCAT, our OPAC. You see they moved from 13.45% um, to about 48. This is the, this is the pre, this is the post over here. And um, again, this will be, you're going to be posting this later, correct? Okay. Because I know it's, particularly in the back, I know I couldn't see that back there. Um, here, this is the Gale uh, Virtual Reference Library. Uh, all of the above being the correct answer. They moved from about uh, just under 37% to 60%. The library barcode. They came in actually knowing that pretty well, more than 50%, which is, which is good because we've worked, some, we've worked a lot with the developmental classes uh, that might precede English 16, but it went up to almost 80%. Moving into course seminar and the peer-reviewed articles, you'll see in the pre, uh, printer electronic journals at 42%, moving up to 57. Maybe not as much as we would have liked, but better than going the other way. Um, most direct source for locating databases specific to your topic from our library webpage would be the databases by subject, moving from 38 to 57. Uh, here's the abstract question, um, which uh, correct answer being down there. Article summary, moving from 45 to 76, and that was that was really good news for us there. Um, and citation, which actually, again, because we have worked some in uh, developmental classes, we don't call them um, uh, remedial, we call them developmental. Um, in citations, actually they came in uh, to course seminar and then going through English 16 at all, over three quarter had a grip on that. And that, is, that was great news for us. And then went up slightly to 81%. Uh, now this, this was really interesting to me uh, because it says, for a paper on a topic of gentrification in the Brooklyn neighborhoods, which of the following sets of keywords is likely to produce the most focused set of results? Well, you see that the correct answer there, gentrification in Fort Greene, et cetera, went from 11.96% to 16.85%. Um, gentrification in Brooklyn went from 62 to 65. Now, the, the question that I have um, later is 16.85%. Is it something in the question? Do they not know? Do they, do they live and go to school in Brooklyn but not know the names of the neighborhoods? Or did they just never look beyond gentrification in Brooklyn, which was the second choice? Did they see that and just go for it? Um, I'm not sure because that is a, that's an extraordinarily low uh, percentage on that. and was consistent throughout. There's something. Something, I don't know, I, and again, I don't know if it's the question or what, but we tanked. We seriously tanked on that. Um, and again, 599 students were assessed um, in the course seminar. So, now, how am I doing over there on the time? Eight minutes. Eight minutes, okay. Um, the very first response from the very first class of students in the course seminar pre-assessment in September 2010 was, and this took about 15 seconds for somebody in the back to say, what do we put if we don't know? Something that hadn't occurred to us. Um, so he said, this, uh, it was my class, and I said, okay, well, put down the best you can, what you think it's right. Then we all got together later and we said, okay, does this like encourage sort of guessing? Should we put in a don't know component? We decided to, yes, we would. So we added a don't know answer option to all subsequent pre, pre and post assessments uh, so there were 22 students who didn't have that option. But then looking at in the data and as far as how the don't knows dropped dramatically from the pre to the post made me think that it wasn't just an easy answer for them. Perhaps uh, that was a good option. We're thinking of, uh, there's some, uh, some discussion amongst my colleagues whether that's a good thing to keep or not. So that's one of the things we're going to be talking about. Uh, okay, questions for the fall. Now, when I, when I first, uh, uh, you know, uh, wrote and, and submitted this proposal, I was thinking about questions that um, we were, my colleagues and I were going to be asked, were going to be asking and answering in the fall. And then, 
And that was, I don't know when it was March, April, whenever that, that was happening, the semester was still going on, we were still teaching these classes. Then we get all the way through this thing and I, I'm looking at this data and I'm starting to think now these questions are ones that I'm more asking of you and hoping that you would, somebody back there has said, you know, I went through this, like uh, this, this pain you're going through right now, I went through it a couple years ago. It gets less painful as it goes on, perhaps. Hopefully, it doesn't get more painful. But um, before I came here, and I said, "Okay, I'm going to Chicago, folks. Talk to my colleagues. What's the what's the main? How would you how would you boil down the um, the the main question here that we're going to be dealing with over the summer to get ready for the fall? This is what we all came up with. The questions as designed best address and measure the fundamental aspects of student learning." in the currently assessed core curriculum. That's what we're going to be reviewing pretty much as soon as I get back, starting next Monday. Um, above and beyond that, should we expand or maintain our current assessment uh, sample? We're slightly below 50% of uh, all of the English 16 and course seminar uh, sections that we teach. It's a guaranteed um, uh, student component of I think somewhere around 2,300, a little over 2,300 came through uh, over the last academic year. Uh, so do we want to keep that, that sample slightly under 50%? Do we want to keep moving up? Um, should we continue refining our current locally developed instrument or explore standardized options such as sales? Um, we have a new dean who's interested in, in, in checking out sales because of the, well, not only these, the, the, the standardized nature of it and perhaps the, the increased um, pedigree and rigor of uh, testing of the questions, but also there's national benchmarking available. That would be the upside. The downside is, is anyone, probably somebody I know here has done sales. Has, uh, it's rather long, correct? Anyone who has done it, it's a fairly long test. And again, we're working in 50 to 75 minute classes uh, with the faculty, an uh, English faculty that is not still completely overjoyed about having a research component put into their class with nothing taken out plus two library sessions. So there's that. Uh, there's, I mean, there's that option uh, to the plus and the minus is what we're going to be uh, dealing with this summer. Uh, then, somewhat larger thing, particularly as we move in towards our um, Reaccreditation in uh, 2013, how can our, our assessment, the library assessment program, help to best position the library within the larger context of information delivery throughout the, throughout the LIU Brooklyn campus? And then how can we continue to keep, um, keep moving out, but then also um, sort of uh, being central in unifying uh, a, a, the, the uh, rapidly expanding um, uh, information literacy assessment that is spreading throughout my university due to Middle State's impending visit. And let's see. And finally, maybe this is the last one. How can our assessment program help to best represent the value of the library to both the Brooklyn campus and the university as a whole? This is something, again, that has come up uh, as we continue to draw more teaching faculty into the library and the fact that I don't know what kind of idea they think we do there. They think I, it's, uh, I'm not sure really if we just, they think we just, you know, we're at the reference desk and then we're playing Parcheesi in the back or something. <laughs> I don't know, but you know, we do in fact, and it, we need, everybody needs to more demonstrate the value. I mean, the, our university actually, our president speaks and he talks about selling credits and they're talking about these are like, this is like a, you know, there has to be value, it has to be return on investment. This is a, it's a very, it's become a very business driven um, uh, whole institution. So the, the library needs to do that also and that, that really affects our staffing, which I don't know about you, but we're really understaffed um, right now. And, but we have to sort of demonstrate a value, we have to sort of demonstrate the need to, to uh, have more faculty lines open. So that uh, certainly, and again, these questions, which I think that's it, yeah. Uh, these questions are ones that I really am sort of putting out to you guys also. And again, I've been sitting back there alone so far today. 
uh, but I'll be, I'll be here. <laughs> uh, I'll be here all day. I would love to talk to you know uh, anybody who says who has you know some signs of hope or help. And of course, that's me. Uh, my uh, email address. And I'd love to hear from from anyone. So, um, okay. Thank you. Make it a good one. Oh. There's somebody there. Yeah, I, I agree, and I think uh, there's been a lot, I think on our part, or at least my part, there's an assumption that we, there's an assumption that we're valuable, and sometimes I'm not sure that's an assumption that's shared throughout, uh, you know, even our teaching faculty colleagues, so definitely not all necessarily with administration. So. Okay, so thank you for that one question, but we can have more later.